book about the habits of the crocodiles. Oh, I hardly touched on crocodiles with pythons, monitors, and axolotls mostly. Mastery was translated, made a big sensation in Germany. Now, what were you testing? Mastery. Mastery. Dr. Schroeder was saying, what were you testing? Please, not to ask. <coughs> Cigarettes. Thank you. No. Jedes Mal, wenn wir tauchen mussten, ließ er uns raufgehen. Und jedes Mal, wenn wir raufkommen mussten, um unsere Batterien aufzufüllen, da wollte der Hammel noch tiefer herunter. What did he say? Every time he wanted to submerge, the boffin told him to come up. Every time he wanted to come up to charge his batteries, the boffin told him to go down deeper. Ohne diesen verfluchten Kerl würden Sie nie mein Schiff versenkt haben. He says if it hadn't been for the ruddy boffin, we'd never have sunk his boat. Mm. One thing about it, you've got to hand it to these Germans. They're just as bad at losing as they are at winning. Did you enjoy your trip in the U-boat? <laughs> How can a scientist work like this? I don't know. You mean cooperating with the service people? How is this? With the Creeks, Marine, to our button. Oh, it is not possible. Every time I ask, please, to go in the open air, no, this moment is danger. Must to the bottom. Every time I want to the bottom, no, motor needs a bit fresh air. Must at once upstairs. No, it's just not at all possible like this. What did Lieutenant Hens prevent you from doing? Well, with the infrared there, I, well, I was just about with this little, you know, how shall I explain it to you, this uh, little... No! Coffee? No! 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 What were you testing? Now, what were you testing? Please. My daughter is still in Germany. Yes. And her dad is still in England. <laughs> so they're definitely miles behind us. Well, they're miles behind us in radar. They've been specializing in infrared. Not very satisfactorily, I believe. However, we can't bank on that before going over the other side. Can we? What do you mean? We must know absolutely everything about their radio location. Not only active, but also passive. And now there's only one gap in our knowledge, a pretty vital gap. We need one of his coastal stations intact. Precious me. Now I think this is where you come in, Savage. Well, we've trained a sergeant, a volunteer, to dismantle the German equipment. We feel, however, that perhaps some vital information might be gleaned on the spot by, by someone with your knowledge and experience. Uh, that is, for equipment too heavy to move, you see? Oh, yes. Would you be prepared to go over with Sergeant Treese? Um, when? Any time. You see, your knowledge of German technical expressions would prove so enormously useful. But should I be, um, escorted? By commandos, naturally. You certainly sobered me up, Sir Nicholas. A bit nervous, are you? Nervous? I'm terrified of the prospect. Well, Think it over. Think it over? No, no, that's the last thing I'll do. It's like the dentist saying, I'm going to take all the teeth out on Wednesday. Think it over. No, if you want me to virtually commit suicide, you'll have to rush me into it. I'll do that. Thank you so much. And thank you for your work on the hunt. Ah, poor fellow. Boffin's service relationships seem pretty universal, don't they? With one difference. We'd never admit it if we were captured. Oh. <laughs> don't talk to me about being captured. The interesting thing about dropping by parachute is that for a moment everything is chaos. You feel the breath is being snatched from your body before it has a chance even to be inhaled. And then, like a flash, a complete contrast. Perfect peace and quiet. The thousands of little fields stretched out below you, looking pretty and meaningless. <laughs> I don't know how you could possibly see the thousands of fields stretched out below you, considering the only jump you ever made was in pitch darkness. <laughs> 
Without a little imaginative license, no true anecdote in the world is worth telling. No anecdote in the world, true or fictional, is worth telling 50 times. You should have seen his face now before he jumped. It cheered us all up a lot. Do you mean you were flying together, Jack? Yes, Ma. How long's this been going on? Not very long. But why did you never tell me? Well, it was top secret, Ma. Surely I could be told. What will have you do all the gossiping in the fish queues about your hero son, Jack, who flies the greatest scientist in Britain? Oh. Is that what they are? The greatest scientists in Britain? Oh. You've made Jock blush again, Mrs. Arnold. He's neither great nor important, just useful. Well, Mrs. Arnold, I, thanks to Providence, have no wife to misrepresent me. And I can tell you without further deliberation that I am exceptionally great and incredibly important. And heaven help the man who says I'm not. Or the woman, either. Oh, I'd have treated you so much better if only I'd known. You've treated us marvelously well, Mrs. Arnold, and we bless you yes, for it. Yes, you have. Yeah, yeah, bravo, Mrs. Arnold. My, it must have been thrilling. Flying with Jack. Oh, it was, Mrs. Arnold, it was. Flying high above the clouds, the fires, the fleck, and then that final descent. If you keep on harping on that, I shall do something desperate. <laughs> 